Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're a developer and you're new to Bluetooth Low Energy Technology or BLE, then it helps to first understand what components are usually involved in a BLE system and the level and types of technical skill sets that are involved with developing each of these components. And that's why I'm here today to share with you the essential technical skill sets needed for BLE development. But first, let's give a high-level overview of what BLE or Bluetooth Low Energy Technology is. BLE is a low-power wireless connectivity standard. Now, let's break that apart for a second. Low power meaning low power consumption, so it's especially helpful for devices that need to run on batteries for long periods of time. And if your device doesn't need to achieve the low power consumption, then you actually gain even more benefits and you have more flexibility with how you can use BLE. Wireless connectivity which means remove the need to have a wire or a cable between two devices in order to exchange information and connect with each other. And standard. And BLE is an open and global standard, which means it also guarantees interoperability between devices from different manufacturers and different vendors. One of the biggest advantages of BLE over other similar technologies is its ubiquitous support on smartphones. All the new smartphones in the market today support BLE. So if you're looking to connect a phone and communicate with another device over a wireless connection, then BLE is a very strong contender and most likely a viable solution. Now, you're probably very familiar with the use of Bluetooth in wireless audio streaming applications. The majority of Bluetooth audio streaming applications at the moment use what's called Bluetooth Classic or BREDR. Classic Bluetooth is the Bluetooth that was originally released over 20 years ago. Now, it hasn't changed as much, at least not as compared to BLE, which has only been around since 2000. 10. Also, classic Bluetooth is not as flexible or developer friendly, especially when you want to customize and create proprietary solutions. It is also very power hungry, so you cannot achieve the same battery life that you would with BLE. Where with BLE, you can have devices that run on batteries for months or even years. With classic Bluetooth, it's usually days and maybe up to a month. So you might be wondering what kind of examples or applications currently utilize BLE in the market. BLE is used in many different industries and applications so it's impossible to give you a whole overview of what's out there. However, here are some examples. Fitness trackers such as Fitbit, smartwatches such as the Apple Watch, medical devices such as glucose meters or insulin pumps or even pacemakers, home automation devices such as smart door locks or smart light bulbs or even smart appliances, remote control for other devices such as drones and remote control cars and toys, smart tags for assets tracking or beacons for indoor navigation in financial systems such as point of sale systems and even in agriculture with tracking livestock and monitoring the health of the livestock. Finally, BLE is also used in more obscure ways such as in Apple's communication and connections across their devices. This includes like handoff and airdrop and other proprietary solutions. So now that you have a better understanding of BLE and how it compares to classic Bluetooth, let's go over the different components or potential components component devices of a BLE system and also go over the different technical skill sets that are needed to be developing for a specific platform as well as some of the programming languages used on each of these platforms. Here's a list of the four common types of platforms potentially involved in a BLE system. Number one, smartphones and tablets. Obviously the most common ones here being iOS and Android devices. For these types of platforms you'll need to know mobile development whether it's iOS or Android development. The most common programming languages are Swift and Objective-C for iOS devices and Java for Android. The second is a basic level understanding of BLE and the protocol, as well as basic debugging techniques and a good understanding of the different types of messages and packets being transferred between two devices. For these types of platforms, you can usually get away with more basic level of understanding because iOS and Android have abstracted a lot of the low-level APIs and provide provided you with more high level. So you can get away with a lot more than what you can get away with when we talk about the other platforms. Number two, microcontroller-based BLE chipsets. These are usually the BLE chipsets that go into the small battery-powered devices. Some of the examples include Nordic's NRF52 series or Silicon Labs Blue Gecko series, as well as ESP32 and others. For these platforms, the most common programming languages are C and C++, and 
developing on these platforms does require some understanding and experience in firmware development, as well as some basic level knowledge of electronics and hardware. And finally, you need a good understanding of BLE in order to develop on these platforms. It does require a little bit of a deeper level of understanding than on smartphones and tablets, and that's because the APIs and the SDKs from the different vendors of the BLE chipsets are usually not abstracted at a high level like on the smartphones from iOS and Android. Number three, Linux-based devices. These are typically represented by gateways or routers or other devices such as Raspberry Pi. With developing on these platforms, you usually have more options in terms of programming languages. So you could have C, C++, Python, and even some shell scripting. You will need some level of understanding and experience in Linux development as it's different than smartphones or even from BLE chipsets. And similar to the microcontroller based BLE chipsets, for this type of platform, Linux based platforms, you'll also need a good understanding of BLE because the APIs are not abstracted at that level as the same as smartphones. Number four, desktop computers and laptops. Sometimes you'll need to develop a PC or Mac OS application that runs on a desktop or a laptop in order to interact and connect with other BLE devices. In this case, you may use either the internal BLE chipset in the laptop or the desktop, or you could also use a BLE dongle that you plug into the laptop. Now, depending on the type of application and the operating system involved with the development of a BLE application, if it's a desktop or a laptop, the programming languages will vary. So on Mac OS, you will have Objective-C. On a PC, for example, you'll have a C-sharp or .NET application. Um, and now you could also have Python on both of these. And similar to the other platforms, some level of understanding and experience with developing on this platform in general is also needed for developing BLE applications. And finally, the understanding of BLE and the protocols. This is almost at the same level as Linux or BLE chipsets. I say that because some of the APIs are maybe a little bit more abstracted at a higher level on PCs and desktops. For all these platforms, in addition to the skill sets I just mentioned, it also helps to know how to use a certain number of tools. And some of these tools include a BLE sniffer where you can capture the packets and the messages being transferred between BLE devices. This can save you a lot of time while debugging. So I really recommend that if you start learning and start working on BLE development that you at least get one of those cheap BLE sniffers that run on a development kit. The other tool that you could benefit from using is a BLE client emulator app. Some examples of those include the Nordic Semiconductor, NRF Connect on mobile or on the desktop. Another one is called Light Blue, and there are many others. This helps you, especially with early stages of the programming and the development of your product to help test and just do quick runs of testing without having to develop a mobile application that goes along with the BLE device that you're developing. And finally, the use of power measurement tools. And this is really helpful if you're a BLE device or if you have more than one BLE device in your system that requires low power consumption and you need to really pay attention to how much power is being consumed by it. So guys, I really hope you found the tips and information in this video helpful. Please, if you have any questions or comments, post them in the comment section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified when I post the next video in this Bluetooth developer series. See you guys in the next one.